figured since I made the last video the open letter about the procedures, I might as well throw in my two cents, with my prediction, how I think the procedure illness, general illness situation will go. And I think the main gist of what I think will happen is that I don't think it's like a one-time all-or-nothing event. I think it's just going to be, and I don't want to minimize it, it's just only this, but I think it's going to be a new bad habit. Um, because that's just how it's always worked. If I look at everything else I know, <clears throat> if I look at all of what's going on, the whole world, life, the best way I you can describe it, it seems just like one big experiment. Not life, not all of life, but all of like the world of men, all of civilization, everything with people is like one big experiment. And the experiment, and I also do think it's always mirrored in like the technology. Like it's almost like what we're seeing in technological development is some kind of projected metaphor of our own our own understanding of like the brain or reality are the same thing but we didn't always have these things like refined sugar and TV and then cell phones and synthetic drugs and pharmaceuticals and they're all like Maybe at the time, you know, maybe at the time everyone thought it would be the end of the world every time, like a big one-time event. But that's never how it works. It's always, it's more like, you know, we see machine learning. It's like an algorithm that's like gradually as it inputs more and more information, it changes over time. It seems like that's what's being done to humanity, you know, it's... Um, it's like a gradual behavioral modification, but there's always a choice to make. <laughs> like, and it's almost harder that way, because I think people expect it's this big one-time event, all or nothing, and you just gotta be brave, one big courageous thing, but it's different than like, it's more like pa patience and waiting and just like endurance and stuff, and courage, I guess, but gonna be the same thing as everything else just resisting peer pressure <clears throat> and the reason I say procedure is not just talking about the shot but I think it will have multiple other that's just the beginning it's gonna turn into like a whole thing of all sorts of different improvements and they might be real like it will be i'm sure tempting they have to make it tempting somehow but i think it'll evolve into other quick fixes or improvements for all types of things like strength intelligence or all types of things but ultimately there has to be side effects and the consequences are always going to be destruction like it's always every new bad habit introduced to humanity always leads just ultimately closer to destruction so it seems like the experiment is long-term gradual behavioral modification and <clears throat> that's how change usually takes place um, gradual modification of the behavioral patterns and the way the behavior patterns are changed first are by changing the values of the people you change because the brain's like a computer so it's like an algorithm like what's it searching for what's its imperative like you need to give the uh, the computer a goal it needs to know what it's searching for like a search engine and um so that value, that's what the goal of the experiment is, is to change the value from like life or growth or growing towards God or something to destruction gradually by changing 
the values because when you change like the belief set the values are the goal if you can shift subtly keep shifting the goal of people or of life <clears throat> that's how you can modify their behavior over time because it's like a computer algorithm it's just gonna it's all it's most of it's predetermined like you, your real conscious mind or your will is just to set that goal mostly and a lot of it just follows intuitively or automatically after that or just by chance like reality just responding to your intention so they need to shift the values to like safety or whatever like or certain things like equality Start, you know, like they need to shift the values so the behavior will shift to realign with that. And ultimately, yeah, it's to turn it all the way around towards destruction. Um, <clears throat> because basically your brain is just a computer and no one is immune to being fucked with or their thoughts altered because... Like I said, they want to shift values. To, by the way, they by, do that is by ideas, because you you have a worldview. Your values, you're partially like your brain part. Maybe not your true consciousness, your spirit, but your brain part of your mind is almost purely just a ma uh, product of you know history, your genetics, or whatever and the environment you could call it all just the environment mechanical forces so all the information that's entered into you is going to determine your pattern of behavior like if someone grows up in one situation and sees terrible crazy things violence all the time they're going to grow up you know with one pattern of behavior even if they overcome that through force of will or whatever like there's still everyone recognizes that a certain pattern is going to be programmed into the brain computer. And if someone grows up a different way, you know, and like an art, art, around all artists and musicians, or like, or in a religious community, they're gonna have different values and pattern of behavior. So no one's immune to it. Um, because if you're going to exist, in the world of people or civilization at all um, you're not going to be able to help all this information coming in you're going to get all these information inputs and I think that's also why it's so important to like get above the brain you have to be able to see like observe what your brain is doing but not necessarily identify with that like because yeah you're gonna have bad thoughts so every once in a while i'll have crazy ass thoughts some weird shit or, or you know just bad stuff stuff you just your higher self does not want for your personality it's just not your will to be that trait but i also don't feel so like if you lose time like someone suddenly expects you to do something you didn't expect Everyone, or I, I do. I'll just speak for myself. I'll, I'll have a bratty, selfish thought in my head. But you don't have to think, oh, I'm a bad person because I had a bad thought, or something crazy. You think about hitting someone with your car for no reason because it just got zapped into your head. But like you would never do that, you know. And it's not you anyway. Like I usually observe that. I'm just like, get a load of this fucking dude. Get a load of this dude. Or nothing, just silence. Just silently observe. Like mm, my own psychiatrist, just taking notes on myself. I'm like, interesting. But, you know, it's all, like, but people thought, oh, why do I have these bad thoughts? I'm a bad person. I'm, I'm a. And that also subtly is like the other side of the victim mentality. It's like a compensation, they're closely related. But if you had a broken ankle, you wouldn't say, I'm broken, I'm broken, I'm bad, I have a bad ankle, I'm bad. No, you're just like, no, that's just my ankle. Like, it's a tool of my mind. <laughs> or if you get angry, like, you would say, well, it's normal, everyone gets angry, as long as you don't hurt anyone or act on it or whatever. Like, yeah, exactly. 
So if you have bad thoughts, like, yeah, you have to be able to get above and observe your thoughts. You can't be identified with that and, like, reactionary. Because even if you don't believe in all kinds of crazy shit, like psychotronic warfare, even though, you know, I, I certainly think it's possible, but, like, even if you don't believe in that, just the normal shit, like, they get to enter, the world gets to enter all this information into your brain. So you you have to be observing your brain. You can't just be working on this automatic al- algorithm that's produced by the environment. Or, you know, you're just basically a subject of this long-term experiment. <clears throat> but I, you, uh, you at, at that higher level above your brain, have a choice of what to pay attention to. And in the same way, I said it seems almost like the development of technology is almost some sort of projected metaphor for our own understanding of the brain. Like, almost like these um, suggestion algorithm works, like what you might like in, like, Spotify or Netflix or whatever. Um... Your brain is kind of like that, too. I kind of think that's just out there because we, like, observed it in ourselves and someone invented it. Like, there's nothing really that doesn't just come from, like, a reflection or something. But you have those bad thoughts, but you don't, like, as people say, entertain them. You don't pay attention to it. You just say, dude, what the heck? Where'd that come from? Jeez, Louise. Just keep it moving, like... Because it's almost like an auto suggest, like, but if you entertain it, like, you pay a lot of, you pay your attention to that, which is really, you know, equally valid to just consider it a spirit, like a spirit of selfishness or a spirit, but like a real spirit, who knows how the fuck it works, like, but you don't want to pay that spirit or pay attention to those thoughts and they'll become less and less frequent and like, what you pay attention to, that's what will get more. It's like a auto-suggesting. It's just your brain computer. Like, it runs on algorithms. That's how it works. And it's almost like you can view the entire history of humanity as just like a successive introduction of new bad habits. Like, worse and worse habits. Like, you could look at this, at, at least recent modern history, the last few hundred years for sure, but maybe all of it. Like, typically you would look at it as like an advancement of like technology, advancement of civilization. Like, then the wheel was discovered, then aqueducts and architecture and, or, you know, agriculture and so on and so forth. But maybe it's, maybe it's just one bad habit after another. And yeah, like I said, I don't think it's a one time, all or nothing thing. They do seem to be, they do get quicker and quicker, closer and closer together. It's like an exponential increase. So maybe it is the last one or close to the last one, but still, and maybe it's not a long time, but I still don't think it's a one time thing. And it'll seem good. Like there's, it's not all gonna be bad. Like way more people are gonna get sucked in than you would think. Like, because some of it'll be like cures crazy cures for who knows what like paralyzation blindness but also like improvements to like i said strength or whatever or looks obviously a lot of cosmetic stuff but i i it seems the whole the what will connect it all of the new bad habit is it'll be like genetic it'll be like some sort of genetic modification and like I said, it'll seem awesome, like cures and stuff, but ultimately, I don't, I, we, I don't think we have the capability or really the understanding to deal on that level, to alter or change or improve anything. I think we can only destroy it because we don't understand at all what we're doing. Um, and besides that, besides just knowing the nature of people, like, they, I just don't think they're, you know, smart, intelligent enough, to, or know enough to do, to, 
do that. But also just from experience, if you just look back, every other thing that seemed good, it ultimately leads just to destruction. Like like most of Western medicine, most of like electronics, uh, you know, a lot of other things. So it'll seem good but yeah ultimately it'll be a new bad habit to stick but it can't I don't think destroy you or destroy humanity because that ultimately is some somehow up to you like there has to be some obviously some element of predestination but some element of free will where you're the only one who can really uh you know, accept salvation or destruction or choose destruction or something. And that's why it has to be like a bad habit and it can't just destroy everything, but it's to gradually change values to turn your compass from life to destruction. Like, destroy yourself just to totally invert your compass, like your moral, not even moral compass, just your will to turn your will like completely against yourself <clears throat> and another thing is you would think well why this has all these obvious downsides so why like would you start with this why wouldn't you start with what I said some amazing cure or something so like way more people would be on board and I think the reason for that is because they always try to have this argument <clears throat> It has, to, it has to be accepted sort of like uh, silently or it's like a tacit agreement but it's not acknowledged right away until it's too late because then you get to a point where like with all the electromagnetic radiation or cell phone, new cell phone um, radio waves all these like high high intensity electromagnetic radiation like you say we don't want this this isn't going to be good for us and they say well you've already been living in an electromagnetic soup for however long 50 years 100 years and people say oh okay and you're fine so stop being a, a you know paranoid but the point is like I don't think Obviously, the common person didn't understand that back then when it was all being implemented. Like, the normal country person, farmer, factory worker wasn't like, oh, there's invisible electromagnetic radiation that's penetrating my body, and I see it's becoming more and more prevalent, this type of technology. I wonder if sometime in the future it'll become concentrated enough to noticeably negatively affect my health. No. They just sneak it in, and no one understands until it's too late, but then they like to say... Like, we say, I don't want to eat genetically modified food. I don't want to eat chemicals. I don't want chemicals on my food. And I don't want genetically modified food. And they say, you, well, guess what? Chemicals have already been in the environment for this long. Look, you're fine. Everyone's fine. That's always the argument. But, like, but, but we never agreed to that. It's a, like a, what they'd call a straw man or something. Like, that's not the point. Is it bad or is it not bad? Yeah, it's bad. So... <clears throat> um, I think another good thing to remember though is even if everything seems bad um, but you never know how things are going to work out I'm going to get into the next video with these markups I started making um but what we all we, you know what you want you can't be unaware of what you want it's a it's a you know self negating if you want something you're you're aware of it but it, but we're not aware of what we need and i don't mean things i don't mean like well i need food and i'm aware that i need food i mean it like experience i mean for like consciousness or your spirit or whatever we're aware of what we want, but we're not aware of what we need. And it's almost like for something good to happen in the real world, quote unquote, like physicality, 
Uh, there's like the good way that we imagine it, the perfect ideal. But for that to come into reality it has to be balanced by like what we would perceive as a bad thing. And we're only aware of the half that we want, the good half. We're not aware of like the um, inherently attached need bad dark half and it's not necessarily bad it's just um resistance you could call it suffering but not like torture just like challenge adversity resistance some kind of friction <clears throat> this is an example like we don't see from our human perspective how reality works how it's just black and white and has to be balanced like maybe you're you say I, I want my own farm. I want to farm, you know, and live on the land and take care of it myself. And that's your dream. That's what you want. But what happens is you get fired from your job and your house burns down. <laughs> and, like, some other terrible stuff happens. But somehow it, it ends up five years down the road, ten years down the road, you do up, end up with your own farm. And we don't see how those things are connected, but it's like those bad things are always it's not what you wanted but it's what you needed for what you wanted to happen it's always like a balance and uh, yeah we're not aware of of what we need and that's what makes reality reality an experience and that's what makes us people and not God is we can't be aware of what we need um, or we would be God and there would be no experience but we need that other that environment that element of the unexpected and the unknown the unaware half if we're aware of any everything there's there's no, nothing to grow there's nothing to know there's nothing to learn there's nothing to be there's no change if you already know everything so we need this awareness and unawareness um, and we might view it as like suffering or torture, the bad half that comes out of unawareness to form reality, which is what we need. But um, I think if we shift our orientation and you have an ultimately just like grateful and upward positive orientation, grateful and, uh, you know, you're oriented toward God then it can be different in that you know that really this whole black half is in good hands. Like, that is God, you know? That's the half you don't have to know about. You don't want to know about her. You wouldn't be a person. You'd know everything. Um, like, if you have a grateful and a positive orientation, then... It's a good thing. It's like a blessing. That's, that's, you, you get to live it and find out what you need. You don't need to know everything. But anyway, yeah, the, whenever things seem bad or like catastrophic events, number one, I, I think it's very rarely a, like a one-time thing. It's almost always a gradual progression. Even if it becomes a rapid progression, it's still a, a progression, not, not like a, a one-time deal and all and also the the bad things and the 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 dark stuff is is what is needed to make the good stuff real that's that's how reality works that's what makes it real <clears throat> and um, the last the last thing I'm gonna talk about try and make it kind of quick I want to finish but um In the same way, like everything in the uh, in the beast, like the artificial world, it's all always an imitation of something like of God or the true spiritual world or organic world. And how I said it works by like this gradual changing of your behavior patterns through the information it introduces into your brain to gradually change the goals, like the values of your brain. I think it's an imitation of what like God is doing. And I think it's why 
we don't remember anything before here. Like, you feel like it's not your home. Bible says you're a stranger in a strange land. And it says, you know, Psalm, I forget what it is, Psalm 139, 13. And he says, uh, I knew you before you were wrapped in your mother's womb. David says, um, you knew all my members um, when as yet none of them were fashioned. Whatever. It does say, you know, basically you existed before you were here. But why don't you remember that? And I think it's because that's the only way to have a change to like the spirit, the fundamental pattern is it can't be in the brain you know that's why you can't have memory of it because that's the only way to test if like the spirit is truly changing like without knowing anything without any brain or oh i better do this because i know i have to do it to get out of here to get uh some goal or someone's watching me like no it has to be just innate like that's the only way to test if the the actual spirit or like the core uh, entity is transformed and maybe that's like I knew you before you were wrapped in the womb that's like the cocoon like you could think of the cocoon like the flesh and in order the caterpillar to have its like completely transformed its fundamental nature transformed it has to go into this cocoon wrap get wrapped in this cocoon which is like getting wrapped in flesh going through the moon nine times and getting wrapped in flesh is like getting wrapped in the cocoon and once it's in the cocoon the caterpillar is in the dream world and it emerges from the dream world the cocoon of the flesh it's almost like your spirit is the butterfly you know the cocoon is your whole body the inside part of your body and everything even the jelly part inside of you and that just dries up cracks open falls away but you why so why do you have to come in with no memory and why into like a dream world it's to like be transformed into into something even better something greater so the cocoon going into the cocoon is like going into the flesh going into the dream world to to be transformed and if we retained memory then you could make choices based on your previous experience and that's artificial <clears throat> The only way it can be your true choice, like your true fundamental nature, is if you have no experience, no memory. Then there's no then there's no faking it. You know what I mean? There's no faking that.
Thank <laughs> you.